Uh, hello everyone that's on the line. Uh, my name's Patrick. Um, I have been playing, I think I mentioned this, and of course now the, the videos are seven or eight years old and uh, now I'm, I'm looking to kind of get back into a more instructional mode with this. So Ken, I think this is a, an excellent uh, opportunity for us to do that. Um, now we can expand into the world of strategy and discussion and tactics and things like that. So um, I've been playing since 2007. I, I kind of willed myself into learning the system. I um, looked at it, uh, you know, from afar for many years, and I said, you know, I, I'm going to just learn the system. So I, I bit the bullet and uh, tackled the, the rule book, and right at that time, I think they were doing the 2008 um, Board Game Players Association online tournament that was uh, being hosted. I think uh, Justin Rice was kind of running that one, and I used that as the, the golden opportunity to, to just jump right in feet first. And I said, well, if I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn from people that know how to play, so I jumped right into the shark tank. And, uh, yeah, the, that, that was... Uh, quite a ride you know that first game just uh <laughs> blew me away because it's like i'm gonna attack that guy and you realize that no you don't want to attack that guy just for the sake of attacking so uh yeah it was it was a uh, very eye-opening yeah I, I think the one thing i do find when i play new players of the game um they have a tendency one of the tactics just to, just to roll up the guns and do a frontal assault and just as it was in the case of the civil war not generally the best tactic. Uh, as I always say, patience is a virtue in this game, and the longer you can hold off and prepare your attack and get the best attack possible, the better you'll do. Um, just a little bit um, um, about myself and how long I've been involved in the system. I've been involved in wargaming for, mm, I hate to say, since the 1960s, and uh, was at the World Board Gaming Championships, maybe even still in the Avalon Con down in Baltimore. And I was kind of frustrated playing all these games against guys who had played these games for years and years. And I said, well, let me just try to find a new game that's just coming out, and maybe I can learn that and be competitive. And I picked up Stonewall Jackson's Way and played it. And so I think I was there for the very first tournament that Joe hosted uh, of Stonewall Jackson's Way down at the Avalon Con down in Baltimore. And I'm hook hooked on the system ever since um i've collected all the all the games since uh the very start from avalon hill and uh really loved the fact that connect all the maps together so very early on in the system joe had at the, at the back of the original roads uh re here come the rebels rule book uh he fleshed out some rules about geez if you want to connect the stonewall jackson's way uh, game, which is the second battle of Manassas, and the Antietam campaign, the Here Come the Rebels campaign, here are some rules to do that. And they were kind of, you know, sketchy, let's say. And so I uh, followed up on what he had and put together a more robust set of rules, which I called the, the Roads to Antietam. And they actually get published uh, in the Avalon Hill General along with a uh, a map of Washington I could come up with because I was also f frustrated because wa Washington was just off the side of the Stonewall Jackson's Way map, and I thought it would need to have that uh, ability to actually go in and capture Washington if you had the ability. And so I uh, came up with that map and uh, put those rules together. And then when they came out with roads to Gettysburg, I said, geez, you know, uh, now we've got all these maps stretching all the way from Fredericksburg in the south all the way up to Harrisburg in the north. Uh, and as, it, as history would have it, that's exactly the entire scope of the entire Gettysburg campaign, starting down in Fredericksburg, ending up all the way up in Harrisburg. And so uh, I, that's when I started back in the 1990s and putting this module together. It's been kind of my, my baby for the last 25 years, I guess, long roads to Gettysburg. Uh, and uh, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I have a great friend, Alberto, uh, Romero from Spain, who I uh, independently fell in love with the game, and he put together a vassal module for it. And we're just about, in the, we're just about to release a brand new vassal module for the Long Roads of Gettysburg, incorporating all the latest rule changes. And we'll be putting out to folks uh, pretty soon, so they can uh, hopefully play along and uh, get some enjoyment out of that game as well. So. And I, and I think that's how you and I first met just a couple of years ago, Ken, when you uh, you were kind of rolling back uh, into 
production mode on the long on the long roads, and uh, you were looking for play testers. So I think that's how you and I met, and then you ran the uh, the the virtual cup, and um, so yeah. In, in which you, as I, as I recall, stopped me in almost this exact same game. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, have I, ago, right? <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, I realized. Oh yeah, we we played a Gettysburg match in that one. So yes, we'll see we'll see how it goes tonight. So I had my redemption against um, um, Mr. Booth because uh, we played, uh, I think, the same scenario you and I played, and I was able to uh, beat him in the in the online tournament that's going on right now. So, yeah, okay. I'm, uh, I'm I'm watching that from afar, and uh, it, it's it's really interesting to see the you know the the last four games come and come to to an end here. Alright. Oh. Okay, so I don't want to get too too far into this because it's still only 8:22 and we didn't, weren't scheduled to start till 8:30. Um, but uh, I see we have 12 folks on the game, and we've got uh, about the same number on Skype. So I guess everybody's been able to to hook up. Joe, were you able to get online? Yeah, really? I am. Good. I, I I clicked on the thing that said RTG instructional game. Is that correct? Yep, and I see you listed there. So you're seeing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm assuming everybody online is is has used Vassal quite a bit. Uh, so I don't think we're going to be so much focusing on how to use Vassal as opposed to how to play the game tonight. Um, and as I said. Um, um, I think in the, in the in original invite, I'm asking everybody to mute their, their microphones, which everyone has done, which is nice because we don't get a lot of background noise on the Skype call. But if you, you do have questions as we go along, please, please, please uh, just type them out in the chat uh, of the Vassal module, and we'll read those off and answer them as they come in. Everyone else will see the same question coming in, and we'll, we'll answer them going forward because... The general idea here is I think everyone's probably at least read through the rules, uh, has a general understanding how to play the game. Uh, so we won't be going through a, a detailed how to play great campaigns of the American Civil War. Uh, but what we will do is we'll be very specific about what we're doing. So if you have some familiarity with the rules, kind of understand them, you'll see them actually be put into action. And then we'll also focus on um, you know, why we're doing what we're doing here. So, so Joe, um, you said that uh, Hood Strikes North and uh, the Stonewall Jackson's Way is, is on the first on the block to come up, but uh, um, is there any other movement uh, um, beyond that? I think there's some movement toward uh, a Eastern, Eastern Theater campaign as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, a, a new giant-sized uh, game uh, combining on to Richmond from the 1862 campaign and Grant Takes Command from 1864. And I expect that Chris and I will start testing that within the next month. I've already seen the two preliminary map sketches that Charlie Kibler has drawn for that. I think it's going to be a four map game. Uh, it's going to be giant size, but it is going to give you you know, both the 1862 campaign and the 64 campaign are uh, tons of scenarios. And, you know, the 62 campaign is the hardest of the games to find since that was the last game published by Avalon Hill before it went out of business. And it went out of business relatively quickly after that game came out. So uh, I think a lot of people are looking forward to the remake of On to Richmond because a lot of people can't find that game. Um, Number one. But any, yeah. I'd say that's, you know, we're going to be testing it by the, this spring and summer, but uh, that's a long way off because we're still going to have to do the pre-orders and, you know, who knows what's going to happen now with gaming, with what's going on now. So we'll see. Hopefully nothing. Okay. And uh, there's also scheduled to be a, a a Petersburg module that as well? Yeah, the Petersburg module will simply be, you know, continue from where Grant takes command left off. In fact, those are the scenarios that I've already tested a bit with Chris. 
we we did a scenario. He did, I should say, a scenario on the crater, which was really interesting. <laughs> People, uh, you know, might be turned off a little bit by the concept of what they think of as siege warfare, but absolutely not. Uh, there was a lot of, um, you know, uh, situations in that campaign that are very suitable for this series. It's true that. We have to play with, uh, you know, the time clock. That is, you know, the, the siege of P Petersburg went on for nine, ten months. But, you know, in the end, there are going to be some great individual scenarios. And then, you know, once we conquer the means of having passive periods in the campaign, it's going to be really good. So I'm looking forward to working on that this summer. Great. Right. And I, and I think one of the the neatest parts about the game I've found over the years is that a very simple rule change uh, was able to reflect the differences tactically of the war throughout the Civil War. And that was the change, simply the changes in the way you're able to uh, build entrenchments. And, and if anyone has played the 1861 campaigns or 1862, Versus playing, I'm playing a lot of the Atlanta's Hours, was 1864, which has different entrenchment rules. It's a totally different game tactically than the 1862 because uh, the first thing you do, just like they did in 1864, is you get to a spot, and the next thing you do is you dig in. Uh, exactly. And, yeah. and that's it, it really reflects, it makes it frustrating uh, if you're trying to attack, but it, uh, it simulates the, the difference in tactics throughout the war very well. Okay. I I totally agree. Playing uh, playing Atlanta Czars uh, during the playtesting and uh, and even with uh, the Overland campaign, you know, from Grant Takes Command, it's you know, if you're a Confederate, you just just immediately chop down some trees as soon as you get in a hex, and you just you know, you get that you get that 1.5 in there, and that's all you do. <laughs> Okay, I think, I think we're about ready to start here. Let's get most everybody coming online. Uh, see, we got 17 people joining us uh, on the Vassal module. Um, and uh, what we're going to be playing tonight is the first day at Gettysburg. And I'm going to be playing the Union. I'm going to be giving our my Southern compatriot, Patrick, the, uh, the Confederates. Uh, and uh, uh, Patrick, do you want to introduce the game a little bit, uh, what the objectives are, and uh, what's your general strategy going into this as the Confederates? Sure. Um, well, this one is a very straightforward. It's a first day at Gettysburg. It's uh, one turn. So uh, I, I like even in the, in the new version here, there's a little uh, note on the back about the redesign that says that you know any, any one turn scenario one uh, one day scenario is going to be kind of dicey. It is it is luck dependent. So um, one way to to normally play this is to much like we do with things like Memoir 44, is you play a scenario and then you it goes fast enough you swap sides and and you play it again. And if there's still a tie, then you just play a third one. But uh, for this, uh, if if you just look at it, uh, you've got the the Confederates have two divisions here. They've got uh, I think Hill. And uh, let's see, Yule up there to the north. He's coming down from uh, doing his levee work up there in northern Pennsylvania. And so the challenge is to simply control Gettysburg here uh, at 3201. And uh, it's a very low scoring uh, objective. It's, it, you know, it's just a matter of a couple points here or there can be the difference between uh, success and failure for the Confederates. So the initial challenge is this is this is you know strictly a maneuver one. You've got one turn to get uh, essentially the third corps under Hill into a position from the northwest or Ewell's corps, uh, the second corps from the from the northeast. And you have to figure you've only got four fatigues to deal with. So if you get really poor dice rolls, you're your movement's going to be part of the problem, um, and you've also got to make sure you've got enough uh, time left over, but meaning fatigues, to to get in a position and try to get there either first or in a position where you can hopefully dislodge, because you figure Reynolds is right there and they're going to move in, in from the south to uh, to take Gettysburg itself. So. It's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. Uh, I, I've played this one just kind of solo a couple times, and uh, it, it really is a race, and then we'll see how the race goes.
Yeah, and that's uh, it's it's like a, a several of the one turn scenarios. It's basically who gets there the first with the most of exactly. And uh, if they can, if the union can get there first, they have a chance to to hold out. The, the advantage the union has here is that the Confederates have to get uh, four points, and the only way they can get five points in the victory conditions is if they uh, basically control uh, Gettysburg. And I have a little force marker to basically show where I'm talking about. They control Gettysburg, and they also have to keep the Union out of both Evergreen Cemetery and Culp Hill, as historically was the case. And so as the Union, all I've got to do is hold one of those hexes, and I'm going to win the game unless I lose a number of manpower, in which case uh, I may he may be able to win with even less than that. But uh, uh, so my strategy is get there, try to get a decent defensive position. Um, I don't, the first core is not a very strong core with Reynolds. I like the situation here. Um, if you're, anytime you're in defense with great campaigns, you're always looking to get into clear terrain if you have some artillery. Because if you can do that, if you can get a situation, even if you're on the plus one artillery, that's going to be a plus two. Uh, if I get one column in my favor for the artillery, that's going to be a plus two for me against the the Confederates, and that's really going to even out the the odds differential and their and their uh, the quality of their leadership. So so I'm looking for the good terrain and a spot that I can't easily be surrounded in and attacked. So so with that, that's my strategy. And uh, why don't we get to get go get the uh, going here, there are no special rules in this scenario as far as who gets to move first, etc. Uh, always the the frustration of the Union in the Eastern Theater is the Confederates win all the ties on the initiatives. And so I'm hoping to win a few initiatives here before uh, Patrick's able to rush in there and keep me out of Gettysburg. So with that, I will roll um, uh, the, um, the initiative and see who goes first. What you generally always play is the Union will be the white die, the first die, and the Confederates will be the second die. And so I'll roll the initiative, and uh, that's the Confederates' initiative. So go ahead, Patrick. Okay. Uh, one thing I did want to point out um, just when we were reviewing this, I don't know if this is part of the change that they made between the original edition and this one, but uh, you'll note that the, the victory points for manpower loss are any sources of manpower loss are both positive and negative here. So it's not just in, in routes and retreats. If they're lost during extended marches or going from, from Zoc to Zoc, then uh, you can you can gain some points that way. So don't know that that'll be a factor here for for the Confederates, but maybe for the Union if, if I get to a position where uh, I'm, I'm losing manpower that way. Um, for my first activation, I am going to activate Anderson. Oh, well, go ahead. Actually, before, before we do that, we should have asked you before. The first thing you do in part every turn is you have a chance to uh, do a leader transfer. Okay? And so the first thing I should have asked uh, is um, uh, I should do my own leader transfer. I don't need any. And the question for you, Patrick, is do you want to do a leader transfer? Um, I do not wish to do any. Um, well, you know what? Let's, let's, uh, let's go ahead and move. I'm going to move Hill over to Anderson. If he's going to bring within... up Anderson, that would be a good thing to do. He's yeah. It's going to give him the additional plus one on the movement. That's right. And, uh, you know, I could roll poorly, but we'll see. So I'm going to ro I'm going to activate uh, Anderson with Hill. And I'm going to place a fatigue marker there underneath him. And uh, he will get a plus two to his die roll for movement. So here we go. So I get a nice five. So I get seven movement. And uh, he will just come straight up the road here. Three. Oops. And I don't have enough to get uh, on top of Pender's stack, so I will just uh, I will call it there, and yeah, I will roll the. To, Go ahead. It, to get on to the top of Pender's stack, that was one of the difficult things, things with bringing Anderson up here is Pender's in in a woods hex, and he's over. Um, He's over 11 manpower, so for for Hill, to, actually, uh, for uh, Anderson to have moved into Pender's Hex, it would cost him one to move into Hex, plus I think two more to 
to, uh, or three more to stack on Pender. Is that is that uh, correct? It's at least another uh, two, yeah, because of the uh, the the thickness of the woods. So I got to pull up short there, but that's okay. I'm only I'm only losing one man uh, movement point, so I don't feel like it's a total loss. Uh, so I will go ahead and roll the next initiative and see how this goes. It's Ty. All right, and so normally. Here in the Eastern Theater, that goes to the Confederates, so I will take the opportunity to uh, to do that. I'm going to uh, I'm going to activate Pender and Anderson with Hill, and out of fatigue. To... In order to activate him, it has to be within three of uh, your commander, correct? That that is correct. So Anderson goes to fatigue level two. Pender goes to one. And here is my movement roll. And it looks like I'm going to get six movement points this time. So now I have to think about some maneuvering here. So we're going to move Pender first. And we'll get him up to the Willow Grove Hotel. And he'll kind of sidestep around here. Three, four. Mm. Now, question is, do I go back to the main road or do I head down towards Little Marsh Creek? Um, I'm going to come down here and seeing seeing that the Union forces are aligned to the south, I'm going to keep him down towards the south here. So I'll use those last two to move him there. And um, I neglected to say that I was moving Hill, so I'm going to hold myself to that. So I will move him forward here. One, two, three, four five, and six. And we'll call that the end of that initiative, and I will roll the next initiative. Still the Confederates. So, interesting. I think it's probably a pretty good idea at this point to get Yule moving down towards the south, so I'm going to do that. Yule is going to activate both roads and early, and you can see that they're exhausted right now, so I have to be very careful with them. Uh, we don't want them to get too too out of sorts because of their exhaustion. So I will add, uh, let's see here, we'll add a fatigue to both of them. There we go. All right, let's see what my movement is. Looks like it's going to be four movement points, so not great, but we'll get him moving, and we'll just head down the road here, down the Harrisburg Pike, two, three, four, and we'll get early somewhere down there, close to him, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we'll take the next initiative here and see how it goes. Still Confederates. I gotta love the dice rollers here. Asshole's being yes. very kind. All right. Um, I'll, I will move Yule again. See if we can start threatening the cavalry from the north here. So we will send early roads to fatigue level two. And what is their movement this time? Oh. It's so another two, so another four movement points. So clearly, exhaustion is a is a factor here. Um, we will come. You know, important, important thing to point out here is when you get into a situation where you're moving units, especially when they're going to an exhausted stage. And just just so everyone's familiar with this, uh, if you go up to the 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 charts on the top left of the the the, the menu bar, you have the GCACW charts. And if you pull up uh, the movement tab under those charts, you're going to see this extended march table. And I'm assuming a lot of people already know this on the call. Maybe some other people don't. Just to just to to show what he's going to be doing with as he moves these units, he's going to have to roll to see whether they become disorganized or not. And he he's going to be at an exhausted stage, going from one to two, which means he's going to have to roll for both of them. And but he has to determine which of those two units he's going to move Yule to before he rolls for that disorganization roll. That's right. So go ahead. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep Yule with Rhodes. I like Rhodey. He's the war machine. 
and uh, we're going to we will move them first and uh, we will roll for their extended movement at fatigue level two so here we go don't want a six I did not get a six so they are okay so I'm gonna move them down the road one two and three so he's got a movement point left and he's gonna threaten Devon so Devon of course across the creek has the option a massive attack against Devon it's gonna have uh, it's eight to one tax with plus seven it's, uh, the leader it's, it's gonna be a, a nasty attack so in this situation I'm gonna have to retreat Devon uh, I'm gonna roll a die he is a uh, a, I believe just a normal size force. So I roll a die, uh, and for his cavalry retreat, uh, that's the worst die I could roll. That is the worst die. That's <laughs> that is going to actually lose me a uh, manpower point uh, because I rolled a one on a cavalry retreat. I don't think I add anything to that and to de determine how many movement points he loses. You take whatever my die roll was and have it. Uh, so if you and it's rounded uh, down, it's not rounded up. So he doesn't lose any lose any movement points. Ah, and Joe has just added uh, pointed out that I would get a plus one for the creek. The creek, yes. Okay? So I take one and I add one for the creek because that's a terrain bonus. That's a plus two. So he would in fact uh, reduce his movement points by one effectively uh, uh, ending so his how march. Many have you moved so far uh that was three so okay. it, it cancels his last movement point okay so so i guess he did some benefit but uh, he ended up losing a strength point so i'll take that down uh when you cavalry retreat you automatically disorganize and you gain a fatigue so i'm going to place the fatigue now he has to retreat four to six hexes using, uh, if you go to the retreat priorities tab in the rules, uh, anytime you do a cavalry retreat, uh, the first four hexes of that cavalry retreat are going to have to be on the retreat priority one. So he's going to have to follow a road and go farther away from Yule, and each time he moves away. So the first, this, his first move could either be here, okay, um, in which case he's just asking to get... Uh, beat up again by Hill when he comes down there. So instead, I think he's going to go south one. And then uh, the next move has to be here because it's along a road farther away. That's two. Uh, and I could go three and four back here. Uh, interesting enough in the rules, uh, now for, I could go six possible hexes away. And once I get past four, I can I don't no longer have to move farther away. So if I wanted to, I could actually go five, six, my last two. Uh, really doesn't make too much difference either way because uh, he's kind of um, out of the game already with only a half strength point left. Uh, but that's my cavalry retreat, and okay. uh, um, we'll turn it back over to Patrick for the rest of his move. I will note that uh, I didn't see any of that. <laughs> I didn't see your movement or if you added anything to Devin. Um, okay. So it looks like we've gotten out of sync here a little bit. Um, so I'm going to see if uh, okay. controlling it on my side will do anything here. And he reduces that. So you ended him, let's see, uh, down through Gettysburg, is that right? And then through Evergreen. And where did you yes. go? F and where to from there? Through round top into three two oh four. Okay, perfect. Oh, so straight okay. straightforward. All right. Good. Okay, so now we just need to finish business with uh, with early. Uh, he will also do an extended march roll, and let's see what he gets. And luckily, he's still able to march pretty soundly. So we'll go one, two, three, and four. And we will do our next initiative. And now it's time for the Union. Finally, I get a chance to move here. Okay, well, uh, I might as well get the guys who are closest to you up there first um, and try to get into Gettysburg beforehand. So I'm going to move Reynolds. Okay, he's got a total of three divisions. You're going to notice he's already at a fatigue level one. So he's going to do second uh, fatigue level coming up here. 
I'm going to activate all three. Uh, he's all three of his divisions are within three of Reynolds, so he can move all three of them together. He's going to increase the fatigue on all three units first. Those are the three units he's and able to see it. So, um, so you can see that uh, I've I've now fatigued fatigued Reynolds twice. I uh, yeah, he's on fatigue level two. Yep. And I I rolled a six, correct? So I can get to go. I get to move Reynolds here. Um, okay. Okay, I think I'm going to try to get a couple guys into uh, right downtown Gettysburg. Reynolds is going to move. Uh, uh, one, two, and I like the he has an extra movement point. I'm going to put a flanks refuse marker on him, on Wadsworth. Okay, I like to do that, especially as the Union, because... Uh, even the best laid plans, you think you have a great defensive position and suddenly you're surrounded on all four sides and getting routed away. So I'll do that with him. Uh, next I'll bring Double Day up. And Double move. Double Day moves one, two, three. And, and to get on top my artillery up to three um hmm. and i think i'm just going to take uh robertson and put him right on top of him because that's going to get my my artillery up to a point where i'm going to get a bonus there so i'm going to go one two three four okay five and then because it's over 11 and if Extra two to get on there, so it's all all three of my remaining movement points to get on top of Gettysburg with um, my last guy there, Robinson. Okay, so I got Gettysburg at least, and I'm going to roll initiative, and that's the Confederates. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, we did not anticipate that, or maybe we did. I don't know. Um, so now, now I'm looking at. Uh, Reynolds with a stack of, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, we've got 19 manpower sitting on Gettysburg. So that's going to take sort of a, a really, really good flank attack, or the dice have to be really in my favor. So I think what we need to do then is to start bringing Hill in and getting him into position so that we can possibly get a good flank. Um, so Hill will activate the entire third core. I have to watch out because Anderson is sitting at fatigue level two. And we'll see if we can get them adjusted where we need to. So here's what we do. We will add one to Heath. So he's going to one. Pender's going to go to two. And... Anderson will go to three, and so he will need to do an extended march. So Hill plus two gets us. Patrick. Yes, sir. Patrick, can I interrupt for one second? Go for I it. I think I, I made a mistake in my last move. Okay. Um, somebody pointed out what the movement roll was. I realized I was adding two to my movement roll, and I guess I've been playing the Confederate a lot. I only <laughs> get added one to my movement. Uh, um, I do not think Wadsworth would have, had, would have had enough to move in there. Okay. So he would take the entire eight. So let me move back out. So showing that even after playing this game for years and years on years, I still make mistakes. Oh, we all do. So he's going to move. He's going to move into the hex just to the south there. Uh, I'd love to have him in Gettysburg, but he's not bad there because he he helps my flanks by That's, being there. That is so, exactly right. Uh, looks like I got a really good roll. I got a six, so uh, so the Confederates do get the plus two. So I got I got eight movement to work with. So the sharks are circling here. Uh, we just need to figure out what's the best way to do it. Uh, so we will um, 
I'm going to look at Heath here real quick. I'm going to move Hill. Uh, he's going to do his leader transfer over to Heath. And um, we're going to move Anderson on the vanguard here because he's got the, the highest probability of, of going disorganized in the march. So we'll roll his extended march, and all we have to do is not get a six, and we don't. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Now he's got three movement left over, and Buford is now facing an attack. So Anderson's got um, 15. It's a 5-to-1 attack, right? Uh, it looks like, yeah. 4 plus, it's going to be a normal attack. Um, boy, I'd love to have Buford able to be able to stand here <laughs> and somehow he could get a... Um, I get a result that make it disorganized it would be great, but I don't think that's going to happen. I um, don't want to take all the time to figure it out. So I'm going to a cavalry retreat with Buford. So I think he is a large force, so I think I'm going to add two to this die roll. Okay. Uh, is that correct? Uh, I believe so, and I'm trying to see if that creek... Uh, the creek does One not... One of the few things that I cannot remember in this game is, is how to calculate the, uh, <laughs> I'm the uh, same way. cavalry retreat. Uh, I think it's a plus two. I'll roll the cavalry retreat. It's, it's a plus, plus a four. I will check the retreat. Uh, it is plus two for uh, for the Confederate if it's a large force. So uh, so it's large force. Uh, no, it does not look like there's anything for large force for the it's, Union. It's a very large force. It's actually it's a very large force. The cavalry unit in the hex has a combined combat value of three or more county entrenchments. Okay, I get a plus two. Gotcha under very large force. So that's plus two, that becomes a six. And so you're gonna lose three movement points and I'm gonna to have to do the exact same thing I did before. I'm gonna to have to add a um, fatigue, disorganize the unit, and so, uh, retreat four. The one, two, three, four, I'll move them down here with Devin. Okay, great. Um, so you roll a four. Uh, and you added two, so I essentially have gotten turned into a speed bump there, because that takes the last of his three movement points. That's okay. Uh, we, we will work around that, we hope. Uh, let's see, we'll move, we'll move, let's see here, what was the best bet? Let's get Pender down into a position to threaten a little bit, so we'll go, uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll get him right there for now. Yeah. And then Hill will go for the freshest of the troops. He'll go one, two, three, four, five. Six and seven. So we'll get him there to threaten Reynolds a little bit. And that is their movement. So we do our next initiative. And it is the Confederates once again. All right. It's time to bring Yule around in a flanking maneuver. So Yule will activate. I think we'll activate just early with Yule. So we will add him to fatigue level three, and we'll see what he gets. Plus two. So he has six movement points. Question is, I guess we will we will transfer Yule over to early. And roll his extended march of four. So he's okay as well. So we're going to come around here. We're going to go one, two, three, four. 
four. And he doesn't have enough to get into Culp's Hill, so he's just going to stand right there and provide some flanking. Because Culp's Hill has no road into it, so we're just going to have to do the best we can on that one. Alright, so our next initiative is Confederate once again. Wow! It's an embarrassment of riches, really. So I could look at this point right now, and this is where I would be calculating flanks on Reynolds. I've got uh, Culp's Hill, i got Benner's Hill, i got the College, I've got, of course, Hill and Heath location, and 3102. So I've got five hexes covered, uh, but Robinson is providing a friendly support there. Uh, so no, actually, actually, Robinson doesn't because that's that's not a covered hex to begin with. That's the one hex you're not covering. But uh, so ah, normally this would okay. be a plus uh, plus two attack mm -hmm. because because of the uh, five and six hexes. But because I have a flanks refuse, it becomes just a plus one. Gotcha. All right. So probably to try to maximize that, we need to get somebody down into the peach orchard and hope that. It our luck with the initiative is going to hold out a little bit. So let's do that. Let's uh, We're going to activate Pender uh, with Hill and see what happens. So we'll put him to fatigue level 3 and we will roll. We get 6 movement points. But we're going to also have to figure that there is some extended march possibilities here. So let's do that first. We'll do the extended march and see what we get. Still holding steady. Okay. So Pender's going to come in to the Peach Orchard and he's at a 14 versus a 6. He's got a little bit of a tactical ability. I don't see any problems with artillery because I've got two factors, or i got two more batteries than Robinson, and I really want to get him out of there, so I'm going to make a prepared attack using Pender. So let's uh, we'll go through the numbers here. It's a, it's a plus one for the attack, prepared. We got a plus one for the ratio. And just just so the other folks on the call, I, what I always love to do when I'm, when I'm Figuring out of attack, uh, I go to the combat chart, and on the bottom of the combat chart, there's just a list of the things that could modify the, um, the the combat. And so, if you can pull that up uh, and just go top to bottom here, could you just go through them for us now, Patrick? Sure, absolutely. Um, so, I, go ahead. I will do that. Uh, so, I've got a Right now, let me pull up my combat modifiers myself. Okay, so uh, the artillery differential, I'm at a plus two, and he's in clear, so it's no effect. Uh, I'm also doing a prepared attack with infantry, so I'm using four movement points for that. So that's going to give me a plus one. Um, I've got a plus one tactical difference between Pender and Robinson, so that's going to be a plus one there. Um, and there's no terrain or flanking or anything. I th well, let's see. I've got, uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got five surrounding hexes on Robinson um, between Round Top. And so, so would you say that you back one of those out? Uh, uh, a ratio of what? Okay, that's you're, 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 that's right. So that's going to be a plus four as you put up there. Looks like a plus four net for the CSA. Okay, go ahead. All right. So using the same uh, same thing we were doing before, we'll do USA first first die, CSA plus four on the second die, and here we go. And ouch, that's not what I wanted at all. Okay. We did have a question from uh, Scott, and he said, "Why isn't it, is there a ratio 17 to 13?" But as Joe Balkowski just pointed out, 
It's actually 14 to six. So it is a two to one. So, but uh, it was a plus four attack. Um, and Pender is actually attacking Robinson. Okay. And so I think a lot of people are not able to, uh, to hear the call. So they're trying to follow along on the, on the, the Skype. I mean, the vassal solely. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. That's funny. Uh, I, people saying they can't hear me, and I and I I'm guessing the lag is on my side of uh, of uh, my Comcast account. So I apologize for that. We seem to have a little bit of uh, of uh, distortion, but uh, it looks like I was uh, repulsed by right. uh, five to six. So just got the plus one result. Okay. So it's a plus one result. I go on the the combat chart now. And I look at my, I have six manpower points, and I go down for a plus, uh, I, I go into the four to six combat strength, and go down to plus one, that means that I have a D result. So you add three fatigues, so I'm now up to four level fatigues. But importantly, because it was just a one and not a two, I do not have to retreat, so I'll stay in that hex not lose a manpower point. That's uh, right. Meanwhile, uh, uh, and uh, a plus one for a 14 is he is 1D. And so that he means he'll lose one. He'll fully disorganize fatigue and he'll, uh, he'll flip. So. Okay. That was a tough dice roll. Uh, and... Mm -hmm. That uh, that often happens to you here, you know, you, the be best laid so. plans. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add a. So I'm keeping track. I'm keeping track of the um, the the losses with this little artillery marker over here. So uh, I had lost one from the cavalry retreat, mm -hmm. and now you had lost one there. So we're back to zero on the losses. That's right. So okay. um, now one of my one of my options in the situation. Would have been, I could, if I like to, I could retreat voluntarily here. Uh, and it's an interesting call for me. I may want to retreat voluntarily because that would be a way for me to get Robinson on top of Reynolds. Um, so it's a, it's a tough call because if I move Robinson on top of Reynolds, it's going to help me with artillery there and get me to a situation where I might get a really positive artillery. Downside is that means he's probably going to get his plus two. Um, I like my odds there. I think I think I'm going to move Robinson on top of there. Otherwise, he might just get munched by Yule anyway. So Robinson's going to take his voluntary retreat and retreat back into. Um, oh. Wait a second, though. A rule interpretation. If he retreats, he has to retreat pr pursuant to the retreat priority rules, right? That's right. He and would have would, to, I believe, would, go to 3303 first by road. Yeah, so I'd have to go there first. So, so there's no way I could get back in a rental. So I'm corrected. Um, uh, as Joe just pointed out, it's enemy Zox. So I'm going to stay right where I am. Okay. And yeah. probably, yeah, probably a good idea. Um, okay. So we'll roll the next initiative. And let's see what we get. It's uh, the CSA once again. Well, <clears throat> let's see. It's still... Uh, hmm. He's got 13 there, and Hill has got 17, so he's in prime position to make an assault without any uh, ratio difficulties. Let's look at the artillery here. It's 5 to... Three. So again, that's that's pretty well covered. So um, my natural inclination, whenever I play the Confederates, because they they seem to have some tactical advantages here, and we've got a nice flank going on. Um, this is probably the point where I would make an attempt to take Gettysburg and see if I can hold it with the onslaught of Union forces that'll arrive after the fact. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to I'm going to take Hill, and he's going to declare. An assault using uh, Heath, and almost like history, 
uh, coming in from the northwest there. He's going to do the same. So let's see if we get the command roll first. I've got to do that. So I'm rolling against Hill's uh, command of six. And let's see if I get enough to activate him. And I do. So the assault will commence. So just again going through the numbers, uh, it's a plus one for the assault. It's a plus one for a tactical advantage of four versus three. And there's no ratio bonus and there's no artillery bonus, but we do have a pretty sizable flank here. So we've got all six hexes surrounded, but he's got Robinson there to support him as a friendly. So it's going to back to a plus three final flank if I'm calculating that right. No, ex except for the fact that, uh, as you recall, I put a flank refuse marker. Oh, that's right. Yes, uh, of course. First move into that hex, just for this reason. Just you? for this reason, exactly. <laughs> so, so your plus three assault uh, flank ends up becoming just a plus one. Okay. So, so you have plus one for the flanks, no artillery, uh, an assault is plus two. The ratio is equal, right? Uh, just so plus, plus, plus one for the assault. Right. Oh, yeah, you were doing cumulative. Yeah. So I've got plus one plus. assault, plus one tactical, plus one final flank. So simple plus three is what I've got. I think that is correct. All right. So let's see what happens here. Uh, we'll do USA, CSA, plus three, and die roll, please. Ah, the heartbreak, but just enough. So yeah, it is a... Yeah. It is a plus two result. Bloody, mm -hmm. but dislodged. So let's see here. It's gonna, I'm going to take some pretty significant... Let's see, I got a 1DA versus your 1DR, if I'm calculating that right. Yeah, yeah. so I have, I, I'm 12 to, 13, 12 to 18 combat strength. It's a plus two, you said? That's right. Two is gets me a 1DR, so... I will take it off of, uh, um, I guess the smaller unit really doesn't make a difference too much. And I have to flip all my guys because it's the big D. And I have to add three fatigues, so they're all going to end up being at a four fatigue level. Okay. Now, um, and it's a normal retreat, so I have to look at uh, the retreat priority chart. I'm looking at the retreat priority chart number two. So the big thing as I have to do is I have to avoid um, zones of control if I can. Well, there's no possible way I can do that. So uh, I'm going to have to go down to the next. I'm going to retreat into a zone, zone of control, but not an enemy occupied hex. Uh, so I've got some options here. Um, Oh, sorry. Joe points out that the first chart in a normal retreat has to be on the on the first chart. Thank you, Joe. Mm. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to have to retreat down this road here. It's one, and the whole group has to go together. So he'll he'll go one there, and now I have to retreat one more hex. And, and that one's got to be out. Yeah. Uh, Thirty-three zero three because it's not in a zone of control. It's along the road. Um, and I really can't do much other than that. One th possibility here, though, is do I want to... Um, I could retreat one more to try to get out of the road for when Slocum comes up. But I think I'm going to stay where I am because um, uh, if I don't do that, uh, Robinson is going to have absolutely no support whatsoever um, as far as flanks are concerned. He's in, he's in big enough trouble as it is, so Reynolds is going to stay where he is. Okay. And, of course, Hill will uh, he will take control of Gettysburg okay. and move right in the there. Hex? And uh, capture the hex. So we will see what happens from here on out, and we will trust our luck to the, the same dice. And there's the initiative. Um, Hmm. Question Confederates is, again. it is the Confederates again. Um, I am going to pass at this point, I believe, because I'm holding. Uh, I'm looking at the. Let me grab the book here just to see the victory points. Um, 
So I have plus five for Gettysburg. I'm actually, you have two points. You have, no, you, you don't have plus five for Gettysburg because I have uh, Evergreen Cemetery or Culp's Hill. Ah, yes. Okay. So you have a plus two right uh, right now. Or I have a plus two, rather, because you have either one of those. So I'm at two, and we're right. even on that. So it behooves me, obviously, not to pass. So I have to get Robinson out of that spot. So we're going to see how we can do that. Um, hmm. We will. We got Penders done for the day. Heath is done for the day. So it's either up to Anderson or Ewell. And uh, hmm. we're going to have to bring. Let's see if we can do it with road, roads. So Ewell is going to activate roads. And he will go to fatigue level 3. And we will see how much movement he gets. Plus 2, so he gets a 6 movement points. And Ewell is going to transfer up to Rhodes. Too far. And now we have to do an extended march plus 1 because he is exhausted. So let's see what happens here. And he's okay. So we're going to go one. And this is uh, into clear here. So two, three. And we've got three movement points left over. So it's probably. Hmm, let's see. We've got quite a big stack. We've got 16 to 4, if I look at that right. So we're going to go ahead and take a shot at hitting Robinson right there. So I'm going to do a normal attack. And that looks like points, that is correct. So I'm going to use two of my last three. So if I'm calculating this, I've got plus zero for the normal. I get plus two for Yule's tactical. And plus three at a four to one ratio. Or sixteen to four. And flanking now, I've got You're breaking up a little bit, Patrick. Oh. Speak, so go ahead and uh make the attack. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm trying to figure the final flank here is again three, four, five. So it's just another plus two. So it looks like I've got a plus seven, if, if everyone's keeping track of that. So mm -hmm. okay, so here we go. All right, here we go. So it looks like it's a plus eight result, mm -hmm. and a four or four. That's going to send him uh, two DR, uh, so double routed. Mm -hmm. So Robinson loses two, uh, goes down to four, gains a double demoralization marker. And uh, I'm going to give you two additional victory points over here. And now he's got to follow the left-hand retreat priority for the first four. Um, so luckily, he does have a retreat path out of here. He's not going to lose anything additionally. Uh, so he'll go right. He has to follow the road, not on a Zoc. So his first move will go one, two, three. And uh, he will now get out of the road. So if Slope can and actually come up there and help out. So, so that's my movement away. Okay. And uh, Yule will go ahead and uh, take the opportunity to advance into the Evergreen Cemetery. And that is the end of that. Let's roll the next initiative. And it's back to the Union.
initiative. Yes. That's my second initiative, correct? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I am up against it here. The Confederates are occupying uh, Gettysburg. One of the so my only chance is a long one. Um, I got to figure out is there anybody I can maybe get an attack off against with some decent odds. Um, well, good news is he's got, I'm checking his fatigue level. He's got, he's almost, he's only, he's only got one more fatigue with three of his units and two of his units are fully fatigued. So I will have a chance to, to get up here. Reynolds is probably in a good enough situation. By the way, he lost his flanks refuse when he retreated. Um, so I might as well take my time here and see if I can get a decent attack off against some some folks. I'm going to bring up... Um, uh, I think I'm going to bring up Howard's core. See how far they go. First of all, I'm going to fatigue them all. An additional one. Okay, and uh, see how far they go. Six. Let's start. Okay. Uh, uh, two to three. So he's not going to be adding anything to it other than the automatic plus one for being the union. So he rolls. Two becomes a three, and that's that's below six. So he's not disorganized. He's going to go into Selcher's house. Okay. Now, Schertz is the next guy to move, and he is going to see if he disorganizes. He doesn't. Now, here's my quandary here. I really would like to get Schertz in that attack against Pender, because if I can get Pen him in there, that at least get me up to a one-to-one. -one. Um, we know already. Um, so I'm thinking about if I force march him here, uh, that would flip him, um, and we'd still be up to nine, but then he'd lose one. Wow, it's a, a difficult situation here. Well, just to show the rule, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to force march him here, okay? And so I'm gonna roll. Uh, first thing he's gonna do, um, so he has one movement point. Two move points already, okay, and he's going to flip because he is he has to be organized to be able to force march, and he's going to roll one die, and to see how many additional movement points he gets. Okay, that's going to be enough to get him in the hex, but the downside of that is I'm going to be losing a strength point for. Um, doing that. And because of the rules of the scenario, I'm actually giving up a, a point. Normally on a force march, I wouldn't be giving up a, a victory point. So he rolls in there, Howard's group. And, uh, and of course, the reason why I need to get them all in there now is I only have one uh, no attack. It's going to have to be the on the next uh, next fatigue. Come from three to four, and well, if it's good enough for shirts, it's good enough. So Steinware will go. Uh, he's going to also, and he will flip, and see how many extra points he gets for force marching. Two, and uh, that was probably the worst roll I could have because that means I'm going to lose a. Point. If I only had one, I believe it's the rule is if I only had one, if I rolled a one, I wouldn't lose anything. But because I rolled a two, I I lose one. And so he decreases, I'm sorry, he loses his strength point. And now he has a total of four. Is that correct, Patrick? Are you with me? Yes, that is correct. He would lose one and still only gets the minimum of the two bump. And, so, and someone point, someone just pointed out, line. I, I, the first thing I should have done was was roll for the extended march, 
And so I had the role for the extended March 1st, and I was successful on that. So I ended up with a total of two movement points on the regular, one, two, correct? And I have two movement points left. And fortunately, that's enough to get into that hex. So I am able to stack everybody in that hex. You agree with me on that, Patrick? That looks good, yeah. Okay. So I've got everybody up there. I had to lose a couple of guys and a couple of victory points in the meantime. But at least I've got them in a situation where I might just be able to get a, a decent attack. So, um, and so I'm going to roll for the initiative again. And I get the initiative. So now it comes for desperation moves here. I've got to... Gonna, try a core assault with Howard. And in order for this to make any sense, I'm going to have to try to get everybody into it. So everybody's going to take a fatigue before I even roll for the core assault. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a die, compare it to his command rating, which is a six. I'm going to subtract this die roll from that number to see how many of my units get in there. Obviously, I want a low number here. Four from six ends up being two units. Okay, so let's see who I'm going to take into this attack. And it's probably not going to be a good one. Uh, so I've got Pender has nine guys. And I'm sorry. Slip back. And I don't have two guys that can add up to nine. Um, so he's got four artillery, which right then is going to be bad news for me. Because uh, uh, I've got a total of... And the best I can do is we attack here. So I'm going to take, I guess... Doesn't really make a difference. I'm going to take shirts and I'm going to take Barlow in. And they have a combined manpower of combat value of eight to Pender's nine. So that's a one to two. Going back to the combat chart, uh, the good news is I do get a flank tag bonus here. I'm covering all six of the hexes. So I get normally a plus four, but. Uh, one of the hexes where Yule is at there gets backed out, so I end up with a plus three flank. The artillery, though, is going to quickly nullify that because he's got four artillery to my three or two. I guess two. That's a minus two. That gets him, uh, because it's clear terrain, that gets him minus two. So I'm now down to just a plus one. The assault action is good news. It brings me up to... Uh, one it gets something up to a plus two, and then I have a uh, a one to two attack, so that's one in his favor. It gets me to a plus one, and so I have it as a plus one attack. Is that correct? Oops. So across the creek, <laughs> so that uh, the creek takes it down one. I'm looking at a zero attack. Ah. Joe Belkowski is pointing out the fact that I probably should use shirts and Steinware instead to keep the CRT column one less. That's true. It would end up on the uh, the six, four to six. So I'll do that. So uh, he's sending I, the Germans the into the mall. Thank you for my <laughs> tactical advisor. But anyway, it's a plus zero attack. Uh, could have been better. Wasn't probably a good attack to take, but. Hopefully the, the dice will favor me. So a plus a zero attack. I'm going to roll the die, and uh, not going to help. I'm a minus three on that attack, and so minus three. I'm still going to lose two. Be deed, and nothing's going to happen to Pender. So uh, long may we remember the Germans as they ran across the field. <laughs> Yes, that was. Uh, okay, so that, that's uh, yeah. Gonna uh, you and that ends up being uh, okay. So I lose two guys. Uh, I'll take them from Steinware here. 
and uh, everybody becomes fully fatigued and disorganized. And uh, okay, so that was not probably a very well thought out attack there, especially with that creek. Um, maybe I should have brought up Sickles before. So trying to get him out of the way so Sickles they can come up and hit Yule. So anyway, keep moving on here and I will roll for initiative. Okay, well, got that. So now let's let's bring up Sickles, see whether he can get up there in time to have some impact here. Uh, Sickles will roll a die for both his units. Two becomes a three. Add the fatigue to each. Okay, um, not sure the quickest way to get there is, but uh, one, two, three, and one, two, three, I guess. Okay, roll initiative. Mine again. I'll bring up Sickles. See how far he goes. Not flying here. So Sickles moves again. We'll go one, two, three. Bernie coming up behind him. One, two, three. Okay, and I'll roll initiative again. Well, now I'm winning all the initiatives. <laughs> okay, well, Sickles, if he can get a big enough die roll up here, he can get both his guys into this attack. And, uh, I think I still not, I'm still going to be out of luck with the artillery, but uh, see what happens here. We'll go with Sickles. Uh, Fatigue them both to four. And, um, yeah, it's tough because even if I take Pender out of there, I'm still a full hex away from he's going to be out of gas. But anyway, just to, to show how this is done, I'll move Sickles again, see how far they go. Okay, that's going to be enough for me. First guy's got a roll for disorganization. Humphreys rolls for disorganization, adding plus one to the die roll. Four becomes a five. He's okay. So he rolls into three, four, three, one, oh, four. Bernie now behind him. He'll have to roll for his disorganization. Two plus one is three. Uh, that's okay. So he'll go one, one, two, three, and join Sickles there. Now, one of the things I didn't consider was whether I maybe wanted to attack with the... Uh, I wanted to attack with him going in. Can I take that? Uh, I can't take that back because I roll for the disorganization. So they're both back up there, and I'll roll for the initiative. And it's yours, okay. Patrick. At this point, the CSA would... Uh... It'd be inclined to pass. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to try to get another attack up against Pender here. Uh, this time I'm declaring the core assault with Sickles. Okay. Once again, this is going to be last his fatigue, so he's going to be done after this. But for the purpose of showing how it's done, once again, for the group, um, I've got. I've got it. Roll for the the um, the core assault. Sickles is not quite as good as Howard, so see what he's going to get off. He's successful. Uh, one five minus one is four, so he gets up to four units in the attack, and so he gets both his units in the attack. Okay, um, and I have a total of twenty one on Pender's nine. Okay, so that's going to be a two-to-one attack. The flank, just like before with the Howard, this is going to be a plus four flank backed out one for Yule. So it's going to be a plus three flank. Okay, but once again, the artillery is a pain because I have five artillery, but I would need six artillery to nullify his artillery, and so it's on the. Um, the artillery combat modifier, which is the minus three to plus one, it's clear terrain that gets him a, a, a minus two on the attack. So my plus three attack goes down to a plus one attack. 
Okay. Next thing I, I take into consideration is the assault action. And so I get a plus one for that. So now I'm up to a plus two. Uh, ratio is better because now I'm equally to him. So it's there's no ratio uh, differential. And the tactical modifier for both uh, leaders is three. So there's no difference there. Uh, and this time... I've avoided cacking a cry. I have a plus two. Is that what you see, Patrick? Uh, I believe so. Do you, uh, it looks like you have a two to one ratio. Ah, yes, I do have a. It becomes a plus three. Thank, Thank you, Joe Blakowski. <laughs> I helped. Uh, so I have a plus three attack here. Okay, so I will. I will attack plus three. See how it goes. <laughs> so my plus three attack becomes a plus one attack, and so. Attacking with all those guys did nothing more than cause additional casualties. So now I'm up to two more casualties and uh, and Sickle's core is done for the night. And he has to fully fatigue all his guys and flip them to be disorganized. And what happened to you, Patrick? Uh, uh, let's see. It was a just a, a. I think it was a D. Is that right? I'm at nine. Uh, it's a one. Uh, yeah, just a D. A D. Yeah. So nothing happened to you. So you sit there and stare at me. <laughs> uh, but not across a creek this time. So you know. No. But I have Slocum. You do. Uh, All rest of the union. To get into I'm going to roll uh, initiative, and it's your initiative. Uh, I will pass. Go, go, Slocum, go! Uh, I'm going to... Re Normally, I would have conceded this game already, but uh, just to keep it going, to, to play it out, I will move Slocum, see how far he goes, moving both his guys. I had to put a fatigue on it. Uh, oh, you have Johnson's division. Thank you very much. Yeah, I was going to bring still, that up, Joe. Still off the floor. <laughs> in in all these one turn in all these one turn scenarios, it's vitally important not only to check your regular flanks but the flanks of the map because you've got that one guy that belongs to Yule's division way off to the west, and of course I overlooked him. So especially especially if you're playing Vaseline, you don't see everybody. Exactly. So I'll roll with the slope up, see how far they go. Okay, and. Uh... I never like to give up in scenarios because you never know when the dice could shoot dramatically in your favor. But um, in this situation, <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, and Geary rolls up behind him. One, two, three, four. He can't stack on top because it'd be an extra one. So we do initiative, yeah. and it's yours. And uh, we will... Uh, let's see. So do I bring early into position just to kind of be a spoiler? Um, probably so. So I think uh, Yule's going to activate early. Um, he is going to be going to fatigue level four, but I'm, I'm far enough in the in the manpower scoreboard here that I don't think that's going to be a problem. So we will uh, we will move him to fatigue level four. And we will roll, and he gets a seven. Um, and I think I will move you all up there to him, so he can get all the way around to early. And he will come into past the saddler shop into 3402, and and uh, just hang out there. So we roll the initiative. Go ahead and roll the initiative. Okay. And next initiative is yours. Okay. Well, Slocum, the last guy I can move. Oh, he'll... and before you do that, I neglected to do my extended march plus one. Yes. You did. And uh, let's see, march, and he's okay. Okay. So uh, Slocum will move Williams and Geary back here again. See how far they go. 
three becomes a four. Well, my only chance is if I can get a some type of a attack off against uh, Yule. So I'm going to move or try to get uh, Yule on a flank here. So I'm going to move uh, instead of just going frontal again. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And Gary goes one. Who's bigger? Gary's a little bit bigger, so does it make a difference? Doesn't really make a difference. So um, two, he'll come up behind him. So that's two fatigues for me. It was yeah, that's, that's just my second move, right? Uh, Add, uh, a three to his die roll as as he was going from fatigue level three to four on an extended march, and you would roll four, I believe, right? So that would flip. I would flip, yes. So I will flip him there. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So uh, I'll roll the initiative again. And it's your initiative. Okay. Okay, I don't know if you guys can still hear me, but here's the next initiative. And it's back to you, Ken? If I can hear you now. Okay, great. Okay, um, so I'm going to try uh, to move Slocum and Gary, uh, Gary and Williams one more time. Uh, see how far they go. <laughs> That rain is to do is uh, move side from a tick for the piddly two movement points. Geary has to roll for a stand barge going two to three. One to that. That's okay. And so he's going to move cross country because. Uh, although it costs normally three to move cross country in a clear hex, you always get a minimum hex move of one, so he'll be able to move in there with Williams. So they're all in there together. And so then I will roll an initiative. And I think to Oh, very next. Oh, of course, I'll slope them against Yule's hex there. And uh, I'm going to increase everybody's fatigue by one. And roll the core assault, subtracting this number from uh, Slocum's six command rating. So I roll a die. That's a one. That means he gets up to five units in the hex. I only have two there. So I'll get both my units in. I have a 15. Okay, in this situation, I have um, three artillery to Yule's two artillery. Once again, I come up just short on the artillery. The flanks here. In this situation, I have all six X covered as zones of control. It's gonna get, okay, and even though I have a plus one on artillery, in order to nullify his artillery, it has to be at least plus two. So he gets in he gets in the column and because he is he's actually on a, on a rolling hex this time. And so because he's on a rolling hex, uh, he's only gonna get a minus one. So I went from plus four, now I'm up to plus a plus three attack. 
Then going down the list, it's an assault action. I get another one. That brings me up to a plus four. The ratio modifier is seven to 15, so that's a plus two, uh, two to one. So that gets me another plus one. So now I'm up to plus five. Um, and there's the tactical modifier. He's got a better tactical than I have. So that takes me down to a plus four attack. So um, plus four attack, Patrick, is that correct? That looks good to me. Okay, so I'll roll the plus four attack. Ouch. Was a one, <laughs> correct? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> to say the least. Uh, so that it becomes ends up being a uh, um, a one, and, and on the fifteen guys, I would end up as a point. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, yes. Somebody said tough nights for the boys in blue. Exactly. And did anything happen to you on that one with your seven? No. So. No, back to a D still. Uh, well, I think out of anything I could possibly do. And, uh, looking at it, yeah, so uh, you end up getting the five points for keeping me out of and away from Gettysburg, plus the five more points for the casualty brings you up to a plus 14, which is a decisive victory. So congratulations. Well, thank you very much, sir. And uh, I want to apologize to you guys again. My, my internet is very laggy tonight, so I will, uh, in the future, you know, when I'm recording this with you, I will see if I can boost that a little bit here. Um, so, uh, yes, tough, definitely a tough night for the boys in blue. Uh, the dice okay. were, were all against you. And that's so, why we play the campaign. So uh, thanks a lot, Patrick. Thanks for everyone for joining us tonight. I hope you got something out of it. Yes, I, I had a very good time this evening. And, uh, yeah, we, I look forward to doing this again um, with a, another scenario. Uh, maybe we can, uh, we can okay. pick apart a scenario and... And look at some some deeper strategy. Somebody and, asks, uh, uh, what's the best way to find a game with folks on Vassal? Uh, probably the best thing to do is, is go page or on to um, the. I can't hear you. I'm not sure whether people can hear me. Uh, but a couple of questions we had come up was best. Uh, I would either go on the the Facebook page, the 